The Daily Signal is the multimedia news organization of the Heritage Foundation. It's a place where busy Americans can come, find out what the important issues of the day are, to cut through the clutter, and communicate directly to the American people, and be exposed to conservative policy solutions. The American people are a lot smarter than the news gives them credit for. They know the difference between spin and news. We work with 100 policy experts here at the Heritage Foundation who cover a range of issues. What makes The Daily Signal unique is our commitment to delivering the news in a fair, accurate, and trustworthy manner. Since The Daily Signal began, we have gone where the action is. That meant sending a team to the U.S.-Mexico border. Reporting from Encina, Texas, this is Josh Siegel with The Daily Signal. It meant going to the steps of the Supreme Court as decisions were being handed down. Right now, we're here at the Supreme Court, where it's just decided whether... And we've worked with veteran investigative reporter Cheryl Atkinson. I have far more editorial freedom contributing the stories that I do to Daily Signal than I had the last couple of years in my professional job at what most people consider a fair organization. Why did we start The Daily Signal? The media landscape is constantly changing, and we want to be on the cutting edge. They've been willing to let the stories tell themselves and go in whatever direction the stories go. It's not a question of whether we can drive the media narrative. It's only a question of whether we have the courage to capitalize on the opportunity that's right in front of us. That is what The Daily Signal is. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Nagme Abedini. Good morning. As some of you might know, my husband, Pastor Saeed Abedini, is an American pastor who's imprisoned in Iran um, because of his Christian faith. He's been tortured and beaten and uh, uh, told to denounce his Christian faith and return to Islam, but he stood strong in his faith and proclaimed Jesus as his Lord and Savior. He has uh, endured beatings, solitary um, confinements, um, and he has refused to deny Christ. He stood up for his faith because he believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he came on this earth um, and died on the cross to pay for his sin. When he learned that truth as a Muslim and uh, learned the love of God, uh, uh, discovered the love of God for him, that transformed his life forever. Um, and he wanted to lay down his life for the orphans and for those, for the helpless. My question is, as, um, as I am proud to see my husband stand up for his faith despite uh, the evil and the, um, just in, in, in the face of evil, my question is, as he's standing up for his faith, how are we standing up as a country for him, as his country for him? Um, I am... Um, heartbroken that we continue to negotiate with Iran while he's ho holding one of our own, an American pastor. Um, they're holding an American pastor captive. They're beating him. They're abusing him. And we refuse um, to secure his release. It's been over two and a half years. And uh, my question is, what kind of a message are we sending to the world when um, we continue to, to negotiate while Iran continues to um, abuse our, uh, one of our own, an American pastor. Um, what, are, what message are we sending to the world about where we stand on religious freedom issues? You know, um, we know that silence in the face of evil, it's evil in itself. That means that when we, we, when we don't act, when we don't speak, we are doing the same things that the, per, uh, the prosecutors are doing to my husband. Um, the persecutors are doing the same things, the beatings, we're doing the same things that we're seeing on TV the, um, of the, of the uh, beheadings of the Christians. When we don't speak, we're doing the same action as, the, as those that are, um, that, as the, uh, we're doing the, we're, when we don't speak in the face of evil, we're doing that evil ourselves. And so that has been frustrating over the last uh, two and a half years to know that my husband is uh, being tortured and beaten as he stands strong in his faith and that we have yet to secure his release. Um, it's been a very difficult two and a half years for the kids and I. Um, I've, I've become, I found myself being a single mom. Um, you know, uh, something I always say is that I, um, 
I'm proud to be an American because America gave me the choice to choose Jesus. And I, I hope and I pray that that's something we can continue to have. Religious freedom is a core value that I believe that we've, we've steered away from. Um, I believe the world is watching. Saeed is a great example of a, um, he's become a face to Christian persecution. And I believe the world is watching on where we stand on religious freedom issues. And there's been a lot of silence. And um, um, I do believe that we need to get back to our core value of religious freedom and fighting for that and speaking out about that. If we don't address injustices, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So if we don't uh, address what's going on uh, across the world with the uh, Christian persecution, it will be something we have to deal with here. And as we're seeing, that we're losing our, our religious freedom even in this country. And uh, my husband has a great chance for our country to stand up and say this is where we stand on religious freedom issues. I want to finish with, um, I want to finish with this, something that's, um, that's dear to my heart and I know my husband's heart, that he's prayed for this great country for revival for many years. Uh, it's something I would find him uh, uh, weeping about and getting on his knees for hours praying for this country. You know, the Bible says that when we, uh, when we turn our eyes to God, when we repent and seek God, he will heal our land. The responsibility is on God to heal our land. Our responsibility is to seek him. And this a great nation was, uh, is blessed because of our foundation in Jesus Christ. Um, my prayer is that, is that I know that uh, has been Saeed's prayer, and as he stood strong for his Christian faith, is that we would turn our eyes back on Jesus, um, that we would repent of the, of the ways we've looked at to other things to fulfill us, and turn back our eyes back to Jesus, and pray and cry out for a nation to be, uh, for healing for our nation, and um, and that we get back to our core, core value of religious freedom. So I want to um, ask you to partner with me and my family as we stand up for this uh, important issue of religious freedom across the globe and, ask, and demanding that our, um, that our country speaks out for Saeed. These are crucial times as Iran and U.S. are negotiating and, uh, and um, and yet the, uh, the issue of human rights and Saeed's imprisonment is not being addressed. I ask you to join me um, to bring Saeed's case up to your elected officials, continue writing letters and emails and calls, educate yourself about religious persecution, which we're seeing more and more across the world, pray for the persecuted, and, uh, and continue to speak out. I, it's time to bring our American pastor home. It, it's time to speak out. It's time to, uh, it's, he's been there long enough. He's suffered for two and a half years in the hands of radicals because of his Christian faith. It's time that we speak out and we speak up and say this cannot continue. While we're speaking with Iran, Iran needs to know where we stand on religious freedom issues and we need to bring Saeed home. Thank you for your support. God bless you.